Yes. I thought I heard you come in. I see you found your letter. Yes, thank you. And the ice skate for your outing with Michael Rossi. I broke the date. Oh. Did you see what Matt Swain wrote about you in the Clarion today? No. Very good. And it's helped bring in reservations for hospital aid luncheon. Everyone in Peyton Place wants to hear Claire Morton, it seems. I wasn't really honest with Matt Swain. I came running here the way I used to come running to you as a child, when I hurt myself. The hurt this time can't be fixed as easily as a skinned knee or a broken doll. My first patient. I remember. Your father said it was a perfect decision. But he was out, so you had to stitch and suture. The unconventional Claire Morton has just done the most conventional thing in the world. She's come running home to mother. From what? From a man and a marriage. A marriage. You're married? To Vincent Markham. I'm sorry you had to find out this way. I tried to tell you before, but we've always been interrupted. I knew something was troubling you, but this takes my breath away. I'm sorry if I hurt you by keeping it a secret. I, I probably should have written, but I thought it would be easier if you and Dad got to know him first. We were coming back together, but things just didn't work out. You talked about Vincent Markham as a dedicated doctor. Never as a man. What's he like? He looks just the way you'd expect a dedicated man to look. He's lean, he's austere, graying, and yet not gray. There's nothing gray about my husband. He's a man of extremes. He can be shouting mad at one minute and laughing the next. And you were together? Yes, we worked together. But we had so many things in common. We liked the same books. We enjoyed the same music. I thought it was a good basis for a marriage. You've left out one important ingredient. Love. I thought I loved him. Vincent thought it was something else. I think what you loved was the idea of Vincent Markham, and it was flattering to my male ego to accept the homage of a beautiful and brilliant young woman. But there are times when a man can't pretend to be something he's not, particularly with the woman he loves. We haven't made it any easier for you, have we? Your father playing matchmaker and my plaguing you to talk about Peru. How could you have known? We can cancel the luncheon. No. But after it's over, I'd like to go away for a couple of weeks. Maybe you and I can take a trip to New York, see some shows, go on that shopping spree you were talking about. I'd like that very much. Thank you. We don't give refunds. You should. When I buy a newspaper, I expect to read the truth. This story on Leslie Harris... Every word is true. There aren't enough words. There's not enough truth. You know why he's quitting. Yes. He doesn't want to be exposed for what he is. He's running away and you're letting him get away with it. Mr. Hanley, I'm a newspaper man, not an avenging angel. I print the facts as they develop and not before. Leslie Harrington murdered my sister. That's supposition without proof. Elizabeth kept a diary. I know about that. Or if you could get it, you could print it. Yes. It would possibly sell a lot of newspapers. 
I could get my readers to send in their old diaries and print one every week. Perhaps on yellow paper? I'm surprised to find this subject amuses you. It doesn't. But you do. You gave that diary to Elliot Carson. Justice, Elliot. Seek justice. And when justice was not forthcoming according to your lights, you had a sick man, George Anderson. And you whispered in his ear, avenge, George, avenge. And now you come to me, you say, Swain, print the truth. The truth. Well, the truth is your meddling has caused enough harm already in Peyton Place. You speak that name as if it were hallowed ground. That's it, isn't it? There's been enough harm done, there's been enough excitement for this little town to absorb, and so you've soft peddled the story on Harrington for fear of disturbing your simple natives. That's right. I try to protect my readers from the conjectures of warped and twisted minds. Justice will be served, Mr. Hanley, but not on a dog plate growled over by the pack. <laughs> Will be effective immediately. Mr. Harrington went on to state that he anticipated no shutdown of the mill operation before a replacement is found for his position. The Harrington's without the mill. It seems so strange. Yes, it does. When Rod and I first married and I moved into that big house, I was so proud. I was a Harrington and I felt that was something very grand and very wonderful. It was vain and childish, but I did feel that way. Oh, I can understand that. And then I grew to hate Leslie Harrington. He was so smug, so self-confident. I hated him because I was afraid of him. He, he had strength and power. Now I just feel sorry for him. Uh, Betty, don't you think it's time we were getting to work, hmm? Rodney and Norman. Do you think they'll move to another town? How do I know what the Harrington's plan is? I was just curious. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have snapped at you. I guess I just feel like you do, that the Harringtons were always a symbol of power here in Peyton Place, and now they're disgraced, and... Well, disgraced? Well, why is resigning a disgrace? That's not exactly what I meant. What did you mean? Betty, I went to see Mr. Harrington the other day. For your father, I mean. And I learned that Paul Hanley did goad your father into doing what he did. How? Oh, he thought he was avenging a friend, Elliot Carson. Paul convinced him that Leslie Harrington had killed Elizabeth Carson. Would Daddy believe a thing like that? Well, Mr. Harrington admitted that he had been involved with Elizabeth. But he insists he didn't kill her. Do you believe him? Hey, guess what? Uh, Charlie Brown bit Snoopy. No, here, take a look. Dad announced his resignation. I knew he planned to quit, but not this soon. Mm -hmm. Didn't he say he was going on a business trip? Yeah, well, that wasn't exactly true. Well, where'd he go? Did you see Grandfather Peyton about this? No. Well? Let's go in the living room. What gives? Dad went to the Capitol to see the Lieutenant Governor. He's trying to get Elliot Carson a pardon. Great if he can. Only, uh, well, I know the old man's got a lot of pull, but that much? Well, he's not using influence, Norman. He's, he's, uh, gone. Well, maybe he ought to tell you himself. Hey, come on now. You started to finish. I'm a big boy now. Yeah. How does he expect to get a pardon from Mr. Carson? plans to make a statement that he was there the night of the murder, and he knows Elliot Carson is innocent. 
What are you talking about? If Dad knew, why'd he keep quiet all these years? Rod, Dad didn't know. Then who? He's partly to blame. He admits that. He was seeing Elizabeth Carson. Seeing her? You know what I mean. Oh. Mother found out about Dad and Mrs. Carson. She went to the beach house to, to see her, to talk to her. When? The night of the murder. Dad found her standing there. Mrs. Carson was dead. That's what he told you? That? And you believed him? You know how Mother was, how high-strung, how quick-tempered? No. Uh-uh, no. They must have argued. Norman, she didn't know what she was doing. She couldn't. Don't you talk about her. Don't you ever mention her name again, Rod. Don't fight me. Don't fight me. We have to fight this thing together, both of us. Let go, Rod. Okay. It's gonna make you feel better. Swing away. It isn't true. It isn't. That isn't lying, Norm. He has nothing to hide. She was gentle. So gentle. I know. She couldn't have. Norm, she wasn't well, you know that. She wasn't really responsible. Norm? Oh? Got something else you want to say? I mean, Dad says, Rod says. You want to add some more to this real great setup? What do you mean? He was there that night. He admits it. It's obvious. He killed her. And you know it. Only she's not here to defend herself. So now he can put all the blame on her. Well, you believe anything you want, Rod. But don't ask me to believe it. Don't ever ask me to believe it. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. I thought you weren't going to keep any more secrets from me. But you are going to keep this one anyway. This one isn't mine to tell. He thinks you're lying about Mother. He thinks you killed Elizabeth Carson. And you? What are you thinking? I'm not asking you to go back 18 years. Connie, I'm asking you to go forward. To something different.